and bewildered, is not sure that the fight has been stopped, this time in two minutes and ten seconds. Custody Amato, who discovered Patterson, comforts his defeated protege. Liston receives the congratulations to the victor, scorns Cassius Clay, who's heard to say, Liston's not great, he'll fall in eight. The referee, Jersey Joe Walcott. Now for the heavyweight championship of the world. From Arlington, Massachusetts. Wearing green trunks with a white stripe. Weighing 197 pounds. The challenger... Tom McNeely, Jr. <laughs> From Scarsdale, New York, wearing black trunks with white stripes, weighing 188 and a half pounds, the heavyweight champion of the world, Floyd Patterson. <laughs> Break when both men stop punching and step back, clean break. Now watch your heads, no butting, no low punching, no rapid punching. And if you do, I'll warn you, and then, I, then I'll just uh, punish you at some point. So shake hands and good luck. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, very calm, sincere instructions from Jersey Joe Walcott, a former heavyweight champion, the challenger in the right corner. Those trunks are actually green with a white stripe. Patterson in black trunks on the left, weighing 188 and a half. He hasn't fought uh, since earlier this year in Miami, Florida, when he knocked out Ingemar Johansson in the sixth round. He then weighed 194 and three quarters tonight, 188 and a half. The challenger's last fight was also uh, this year in March, a three-round knockout over Kideon Lave. Undefeated challenger in Jersey Joe Walcott now is trying to get the man that presses the uh, button to release the bell, which starts around. He's trying to get him to uh, push the button, and there it is. Here's round one of a scheduled 15 round World Heavyweight Championship fight. Neely told us that he uh, knew that Patterson was a notoriously slow starter, so he would try early to be aggressive and uh, get across damaging punches. But Neely, a superbly uh, conditioned athlete, six feet two. Patterson uh, is just shy of six feet. Right back, right back, right back, right back. 
Eight. They must take the mandatory eight count. We have about a minute and 45 seconds left in the first round, and McNeely is down for the second time. Mandatory eight count being told. And McNeely rushes in. McNeely is unmarked. again. They are vicious. One minute left in round one. It appears that Patterson is going all out to uh, get a knockout here in the first round. A little uh, roughing there. to have cleared his head from those two knockdowns here in the first round. 30 seconds to go, round one. Tomato, his manager, uh, nearer to us in the white hair, talks to Floyd. And here is round two at Maple Leaf Garden. Both boys jabbing for the first time in the bout. Neely has a reach, pulling the reach of eight inches. Starting to use it now.
over eight and it's often leaves openings. Which in the case here is a big mistake being uh, over eager and leave an opening because of Patterson's tremendous speed. Here the bell soon in the ground two. We're ready now for the third round. Patterson here in round three. He has always given away weight in championship bouts. He's accustomed to uh, giving away as much as eight and a half here tonight. Gave away nearly 29 pounds to Brian London. a right hook. Another, and there's the combination. A mandatory eight count here in the third round. A minute and a half to go in the round. A minute and a half, and you notice there is a cut on the right cheek of Tom McNeely. A minute and 15 seconds remaining in round three. McNeely down once more. Mandatory eight count being counted by Jersey Joe Walcott. Fourth time now that McNeely has been down in this bout. Minute to go. how that one will be ruled. That is ruled as a slip. And McNeely now is down from a little left chop. We have just 30 seconds remaining in the round. He is up once more at eight. 20 seconds left in the round. About 10 seconds to go in the round. And there is the bell. Watch McNeely. Let's look at uh, Tom McNeely who was actually on the canvas five times. One, however, did not count. It was ruled a slip by uh, the referee, Jersey Joe Walcott. So now he has been down six times, and only three rounds have gone by the board here in Toronto. The champion, uh, relentless in his attack, doesn't appear tonight to have the speed that he normally has. McNeely now, uh, that's Pete Fuller, talking to him again. He has about five more seconds of rest, and you see the champion on the left already up, and he has his mouthpiece out now, Floyd Patterson. Let's see if he puts it back in. Yes, he does. may carry him a little ways in this round or through it. There was a butt. Warning from uh, Jersey Joe Walcott. 
left in the round. minute and ten seconds left in round four. Up at eight again. One minute to go in the round. And McNeely is down in Patterson's corner. Patterson uh, did not go to a neutral corner. McNeely is... McNeely down. Ten seconds to go. Let's see the count may toll. And the fight is over. The fight is over, ladies and gentlemen. Tom McNeely with about seven seconds left in the round. Is counted out. There you see Tom McNeely. Our count had him down nine times in the bout. The same number that Patterson was down against Johansson when he lost the title, but and this time, it was Patterson that put out the damage, and despite the courageous bid of the undefeated challenger, Tom McNeely, Jr., Floyd Patterson retains that coveted heavyweight crown. There is McNeely. The only marking he has is a mouse under his right eye. He is, he is uh, crying because uh, he really wanted to take the championship back to Boston. He said that he uh, was going to feel tonight like Harry Truman felt on the night uh, when he won the election over Thomas Dewey. Just a moment, uh, Jack McCarthy. Jack McCarthy will give the time of the round. Jack McCarthy will give it in just a moment, the time of the round. It was close near the end of the fourth round here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The champion perspiring uh, heavily, and we'll soon find out just how much of a workout it was against uh, a determined and well-conditioned heavyweight. Still, we don't have the time, and of course, we don't want to. Here now is Jack McCarthy. Jack? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it appeared that uh, Tom McNeely uh, 
tried to carry out his predictions, you know, of uh, carrying this fight to you. At the bottom of my heart. Okay. He's one of the greatest. And if anyone ever tells him anything other but a real champion, they get an answer to me. I mean that flow from the bottom of my heart. You're a gentleman in and out of the ring, and you're a hell of a champion. Mm -hmm. You're part of yourself. Thank you. Very, very gracious exchange here, Floyd. Um, he was, was he as aggressive as you thought he would be? Well, actually, uh, I would say that he was, I expect him to be aggressive, but I didn't expect him to be as surprising as he was, and his left jab reminded me a little of Ingemar's, although I think it was more effective, because it hurt when it landed. Ingemar didn't hurt, but it was annoying. His jab hurt, and he had a very sneaky right hand, similar to Ingemar also. I personally think that, despite the fact the odds were 10 to 1 uh, in my favor, that tonight, McNeely displayed ability, courage, and everything else. And I think if he continues with 23 wins, this is his first loss, that he will someday be up among the number one contenders and possibly even the champion. I think he has the heart, the ability, and everything else that goes with it. And uh, it makes me feel proud to fight a fighter like McNeely that can give the crowd, I think, their money. Uh, Floyd, uh, were you satisfied with your condition? I know you wanted to be 100% better, and I like those combinations you were throwing. Well, uh, McNeely was more surprising than anything else. Uh, I got caught a few times with my hands, well. Were you hurt and ever? Well, uh, I was hurt, but not hurt so bad I didn't know what I was doing. In other words, the punches stung and I was slightly dazed a few times, but fortunately it wasn't as serious as it might have looked. Floyd, what was your reaction to the fight uh, that preceded this one in Philadelphia? Well, my admiration for Sonny Liston, as far as the fighter in the ring is concerned, uh, I've already uh, said in many cases to the reporters over television and everything else that I think Sonny Liston is a great fighter. And, uh, all the capabilities of becoming a champion. Floyd, uh, as, as uh, Dan Florio, your fine trainer, is cutting off the bandages off that good left hand, do uh, you have any idea what your plans might be? Well, I said that I was going to fight twice a year. Uh, I intend to continue fighting uh, early next year. I intend having another fight. And of course, I'll continue having two fights a year until I lose. Wayne Thornton, a promising young contender for Harold Johnson's late heavyweight title. Tonight he's meeting veteran Willie Pastrano for the third time. Thornton won the first fight, was held to a draw in the second. Standing squarely in Thornton's path to light heavyweight honors is one of the most skillful boxers in the division, Willie Pastrano. He has done well against tough names in both late heavyweight and heavyweight ranks, and his fine left jab and all-around style have made him a perennial contender. The winner gets a title shot as Willie Pastrano meets Wayne Thornton tonight on the Fight of the Week.
ringside commentator. A veteran of 13 years inside the squared circle fighting in all divisions from welterweight to heavyweight, the 27-year-old Pastrano has never been off his feet in the fight. The only time he failed to finish was when he was stepped on cuts by Brian London. Pastrano has won 57 of his 76 fights with 11 losses and 8 throws. He has knocked out 12. The 23-year-old Thornton is tremendously popular in California. Possessing a good knockout punch, he has won 27 of his 30 bouts with two losses and the draw with Pastrano. Thornton has registered 18 KOs and has never been stopped. Both boys stand 5 feet 11 and a half, and both were born in Louisiana. Thornton in Oak Grove and Pastrano in New Orleans. At the Nevada Boxing Commission weigh-in today, Pastrano was 176 and 3 quarters, Thornton 175 and 1 quarter. In just a moment, we'll bring you the 10-round light heavyweight bout between Willie Pastrano and Wayne Thornton.
first fight, Bogdan was very effective to the 